Today we're looking at the Great Plains people. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, don't forget to check out dailybellringer.com for resources that go with many of the Bell Ringer videos. If you've viewed other Bell Ringer videos covering Native American history, you've learned about the Hohokam and Anasazi that lived in south, the southwestern part of what would become the United States, and the Mississippian who lived along the Mississippi River Valley and its tributaries prior to European colonization of North America. Now we move to the Great Plains with many different tribes and communities that arose throughout the region. By 700 AD, many native people had migrated from the southwest and settled in the Great Plains region. At first, they were primarily nomadic people following whatever food was available, but as time went on, they began to develop permanent settlements as they began to develop agriculture focused around growing maize or corn. This created two distinct groups, as some tribes were more nomadic, moving from place to place, while others were more sedentary or remained in one location. Among the nomadic groups were tribes such as the Blackfoot, Cheyenne, Comanche, Apache, and Plains Cree. Some of the tribes that remained more in one location include, included the Hidatsa, Iowa, Mandan, Missouri, Wichita, Osage, and Pawnee. By 1200 AD, more native people had immigrated into the region, drawn there by the enormous numbers of bison or buffalo roaming the open plains. These tribes developed a nomadic or roaming culture as they followed the migration of bison herds. There were very few long-standing settlements. Instead, they lived in teepees which could easily be taken down and moved from place to place following the bison. The bison became the central resource as it's truly remarkable to see how the native people wasted nothing after killing a bison. First and foremost, the bison was a source of meat, but beyond that, the fur was used for clothing and blankets, the skin as canvases for the teepees, the hooves to make glue, the teeth for jewelry, the bones for digging tools, and even used some of the bones as eating utensils such as spoons and forks. In the mid-1500s, Spanish conquistador Francisco Vazquez de Coronado encountered some of the Great Plains Native Americans on his journey exploring the continent in search of gold. The Europeans that came in contact with these native people brought with them horses that had gone extinct many years before in North America. It is believed that the Comanche were the first to begin to use horses successfully in the mid-1600s. Soon after, the Blackfoot and Sioux also began riding, and from there other tribes began taming and using horses. The introduction of horses to the Great Plains people revolutionized their civilization. By the 1700s, many of the Great Plains tribes had become master horsemen, as they used horses in their hunting of bison and in everyday life on the open plains. The different tribes of the Great Plains people spoke different languages, however. They did develop a common system of sign language, sometimes called Plains Sign Language, that allowed them to communicate from one tribe to the next. Another interesting commonality between the Plains people was that most developed forms of ceremonial dance. Many would perform special dances to call in the buffalo or a dance to bring good fortune during a coming hunt. Some tribes such as the Crow and Blackfoot had ceremonial dances that were done before planting crops. And as I mentioned before, the Plains people did not waste one single part of the bison and only hunted what they needed. However, in the mid to late 1800s, more and more Americans began to move west as they followed what they believed was their manifest destiny or right to settle the entire North American continent. There were really no regulations on hunting of buffalo, and within a very short time, the new American settlers had hunted and killed the bison to the edge of extinction. It is estimated that during the 1600s, there were as many as 30 million bison in the Great Plains, and then by the late 1800s, that number had gone to barely 100 bison living in the wild. This severely hurt the Plains people as the bison was, again, their central source of food and their central resource. Add to this the fact that as more Americans moved into the region, the United States government forced native people from their land and forced many to move to reservations. 
Many of these tribes of Plains people still exist today, and generations later these tribes still proudly preserve the culture and traditions of these great civilizations. So with that, hopefully you learned something, and thanks for watching.